Hello, everybody. The study I am going to introduce you is about a shell shape optimization procedure based on relaxed funicularity. The funicularity can be defined as the capacity of a structure to bear loads through axial forces only. An important contribution towards the formalization of this concept was given by Robert Hooke in a Latin anagram. The solution of this anagram was published by Richard Waller and Reitz. As hence the flexible line, so but inverted, will stand the rigid arch. This assessment inspired the methods that have been used in the last two centuries to define funicular geometries. These comprise methods based on physical models without bending stiffness, as those used by OD, graphic methods and numerical simulations. When a 1D structure is not funicular, it is possible to appreciate the distance between the axis and the thrust line. This distance is called eccentricity and is equal to zero if the structure is funicular, otherwise generates bending moments proportional to its value that we want to avoid in order to pursue higher stiffness, higher section strength and efficient employment of the construction materials. In the light of what said, the solicitations acting on a funicular structure are those axial or membrane, respectively for 1D or 2D structures. The funicularity depends on the boundary conditions and on the ratio between the bending and the axial stiffness. So, what happens when the boundary conditions are not congruent with the shape considered and the applied load, or when the bending stiffness is not negligible? In these cases, the bending actions have to be considered and a proper generalization of eccentricity to 2D structures can be used to quantify the funicular behavior of shells. In order to better understand the meaning of the generalized eccentricity, we can consider a generic shell. For each point belonging to its surface, we are able to evaluate the generalized bending moments and membrane forces, whose ratio gives the generalized eccentricity. In this way, we are able to know the value of eccentricity in each point of the surface and in each direction. The generalized eccentricity is graphically represented by an ellipse in the NM plane, when the angle alpha ranges between 0 and 2 pi. The slopes of the tangents to the ellipse from the origin of the plane represent the eccentricity extrema. The measure of generalized eccentricity has been used by some of the authors to define a relaxed form of funicularity. According to the relaxed funicularity definition, a shell is R funicular if the eccentricity belongs to an admissible region, that can be defined according to the middle third criterion when no tension materials are used. Here I show you a simple example on how the measure of eccentricity can be used to improve the mechanical efficiency of a parabolic arch. In the top picture, we can see a slight shape change that corresponds to the leveling of the eccentricity distribution over the arch that from a non-funicular behavior turns to an arfunicular one. With the aim of finding a shell shape as much as possible arfunicular, we have developed a shell shape optimization process where three shape functions are linearly combined to form a resulting shape. The right picture shows a few possible shapes obtained by fixing the coefficient c1 to 5 and modifying c2 and c3. What we want to minimize in the shell optimization are the extrema of the generalized eccentricity. The left picture shows the eccentricity extrema scattered distribution of a starting shape. These values go into the objective function whose minimization generates a shape characterized by the eccentricity distribution shown in the right picture where it can be noticed that the eccentricities are closer to zero and mostly inside of the middle third region. The optimization process based on eccentricity minimization can be summarized in four main steps that comprise the definition of a starting shape and an error function depending on the generalized eccentricity. In the third step, the starting shape is varied in order to minimize the objective function then it is necessary to define an admissible range for the generalized eccentricity and to verify that the minimum and the maximum eccentricity belongs to the range in each point of the surface. This is a scheme of the shape optimization algorithm. Firstly, a few input parameters should be decided. 
Then the coordinates of the starting shape are evaluated and used to build a finite element model. In the following step, a linear static analysis of the structure subject to a given load case is performed and the minimum and maximum eccentricities are computed. It is possible to apply a penalty to the tensile areas. The eccentricities that result from these computations are used to evaluate the objective function. If convergence is reached, the process stops, otherwise the coefficients C2 and C3 are updated and the procedure is repeated until convergence. These are some of the shapes obtained after the optimization of shells with different values of thickness S, subject to self-weight. The black edged surfaces represent the initial shapes. These are the results obtained for a shell with a thickness of 20 cm, subject to self-weight. In the bottom left picture, it is possible to appreciate the rise of the final shape along the edges. The dimensionless eccentricity distribution before and after the optimization is shown in the right pictures. The color bar represents the values of the dimensionless eccentricity that increases going from blue to red, the latter meaning that the eccentricity is out of the cross-section middle third or that there is tension. An improvement is noticed, especially in the central areas of the shell. To conclude, the preliminary results of the proposed optimization procedure are promising. The effect of the optimization beyond the shape change is also the improvement of the distribution of the eccentricity. The method is at an early stage and more analyses are needed to test its effectiveness. These should comprise variation of boundary conditions and load cases and the use of different objective functions. Thank you for your kind attention.